This is the video for the very important guidelines for the labs, and this is what you would have to access. And here are the things that you would have to review, so general guidelines, all pre and post labs, important notes, which are about measurement errors, significant figures, and lab conclusions. So here's that Word document. Measurement errors, significant figures, more insignificant figures, and more insignificant figures. Objectives for the lab experiments, and KPC's physics lab assistant, which shows up as an extra credit question. So, here's the preliminary lab quiz. Ten questions total. Just a name up here. When you look through the general guidelines for labs, you should figure out that you should read through each post a lab assignment. So that's true. Watching the instructor's lab videos, answering each lab experiment's pre lab questions, assemble and perform each experiment. This one here is true too, but it doesn't apply to you if you're taking a lab intensive, so just say true. Um, again, if you did uh, labs at home, then that would be true as well, so just say true. If you're doing it again, measuring, analyzing the data, compiling data and results, writing a conclusion, submitting, again, that is only for at home people, answering each experiment's post lab questions. Okay, for all the pre and post labs, I really have to update this particular one. Multiple choice, of course, check only one answer. Multiple answer, check several. True and false, that's obvious. I really have to update this one here. It's kind of like only a filler question. Make it people at least look at the pre and post labs. But for now, that's what it is. Important notes. There are actually several parts to the important notes that I posted as a Word document. So this is the first one. These are examples of measurements. And when you do measurements, you will encounter exactly two kinds of errors, random errors and systematic errors. And the examples are distance, time, and mass. It could be anything else that you might encounter in the labs, such as force or pressure or velocity, any one of those would have errors as well, and those could show up as either random or systematic errors. All right, distant measurements, random errors, one can only measure to the nearest fraction of a second. Oh, that's not the one. I just read the first one off here, but let's see which one it is. One can only measure to the nearest millimeter or centimeter or meter depending on the desired accuracy. And so that's this one here. Okay, distance measurements, systematic errors. Let me see. Oh, here it is. The manufacturer supplied a faulty ruler. The centimeter divisions are too close to each other. Somebody or somebody sawed off the first two inches of a yardstick. I actually have a yardstick like that and hope that I don't give it to my students. Um, I know that these are somewhat off the screen, but of course you have the lab, preliminary lab quiz in front of you. Anyway, okay, time measurements, random errors, that should be the first one. Can only measure to the nearest fraction of a second, nearest second, the nearest minute, depending on the desired accuracy or the supplied watch. And apparently the way I have these arranged here is random, so don't copy down the letters. But look at these here, time measurements, systematic errors, let's see, which one is it? The manufacturer supplied a faulty watch, it's always too slow or always too fast, the reaction time while starting and stopping of stopwatch. 
Mass measurement, random errors. One can only measure to the nearest fraction of a gram, the nearest gram, the nearest 10 gram, depending on the desired accuracy of, or the supplied balance. Mass measurements, systematic error. So the balance is not properly teared, zero, the manufacturer supplied a faulty scale, the grams divisions are too far from each other. These are just examples. All right. And the next one, port notes, measurement errors. Again, measurement and equipment errors. All measurements contain errors. Any equipment used may yield errors. You need to mention and specify any errors in detail that you may have encountered during your experiment in the typed conclusion at the end of each lab. And that refers to the random and systematic errors for which I just listed some examples. If you find an equipment error, you would want to correct that or change something and sometimes you can't and then you would have to mention it and usually that would show up as a systematic error. Alright, the next two calculations and rounding as well as human error will never ever ever be mentioned in a conclusion because they're supposed to be avoided by at all costs. So Compute calculations and rounding. Computation errors are to be avoided at all costs. Calculations should be double checked. Rounding is not an error at all. Rounding is a necessary method for coming up with the proper number of sig fig. Neither of these errors are part of an error discussion in the type conclusion required at the end of each lab report. Measurements are either taken by humans in analog form, for example, ruler balance or thermometer, or by digital measurement devices, for example, stopwatch voltmeter, whose measurements are often read off by humans. All measurements are, are therefore specified by the device and the method used. Thus, they need to be named properly. See the examples for general errors. Thus, mentioning human error in the type conclusion required at the end of each lab report is meaningless and points will be taken off because it's not specific. All right, and it looked like that was a little bit randomly arranged here. Significant figures. So you really need to read through significant figures because you will be using it for all lab measurements. You're measuring something 2.29 meters of length 1.725 meters for the width you're supposed to figure out the area from that but notice that this one here you measure to 3 sig fig that means there is nothing be beyond the 9 which is in this case 9 centimeters you didn't measure more accurately than that which means any kind of result calculation that you derive from that cannot be more accurate than the 2.29 meters here than the three sig fi significant figures that you have. Over here nothing derived from that can be any more accurate than the four significant figures that are here. Now the rule is for multiplication and division that you go with the least number of significant figures. So it's clear that when you do anything with these two numbers such as multiply or divide them you cannot come up with more than three significant figures. Okay, which is what it says in the next sentence here that was just off the screen. Thus, there are three sig fig for the result. I always use sig fig as an abbreviation for significant figure. Now, when you type it onto the cal to the calculator, the calculator will show 3.95025, which is six significant figures, which must be rounded to 3.95. There are the three significant figures. If you wrote down any more than that, you would be saying that you were more accurate than you really were. And you weren't. You were only accurate to three significant figures on one, four on the other one. You go with the least, which is three. And so you have to say 3.95 square meters, nothing else. If you rounded that to four square meters, then you're saying that you were not as accurate. But however you were, you were accurate to 3 sig fig. 
And then it says in parentheses here, by the way, this is not in any way caused by using the metric system. In fact, in the American customer system, you're doing the exact same thing. The above numbers would be, and here's an example, 7 feet 6 inches and 5 30 seconds. And then this is the other number. Thus, there are three significant figures for the result. Count them here. 1, 2, 3. Over here, there are 1, 2, 3 four actually and again you go with the least number here the 32 doesn't count because that's the denominator of a fraction it's 5 over 32 so it's three significant figures the calculator is going to give you 42.51509 but that needs to be rounded to three significant figures 42.5 square feet and of course if you went to a store to buy carpet you wouldn't tell the salesperson I need this many square feet. No, you would tell them, I need 42.5 square feet, or you would even round it more. All right, let's practice that. Okay, compute the density of a quite pure pyrite specimen by dividing its mass 137 grams by its volume 28 cubic centimeters. And when I do that, I get on my calculator 4.892857143, which is actually not listed as the answer here, but it needs to be rounded properly with the correct significant figures. In between these two here, 137 divided by 28, two significant figures, it would have to be the rounded 4.9 grams per cubic centimeter. And apparently during my coffee break I already checked the correct answer. All right, compute the period of 150 centimeter long pendulum measured to the closest centimeter. That means 150, all of 150 are sig fig. So this is not a rounded 150, but it's exactly 153 sig fig. By dividing the measured time 49.11 seconds by the number of swings, which was exactly 20. Now this number here, where it says exactly 20, that's also not rounded to just 20. This one is exactly 20, which means it has many, many sig fig, or either regard it as that, or, or say that I don't pay attention to it. As I divide by it, I assume it has infinitely many sig fig, because I'm supposed to have exactly 20. And as I divide it into 49.11 seconds, I should come up with 4 sig fig. Notice that when I do that, the 150 that I mentioned a moment ago actually doesn't figure into my calculation. So that means that the answer will only depend on the 4 sig fig here. Again, this is not a rounded number. It says it's exactly 20. It's not 20 and a half or 20.1 swings. It's exactly 20 swings. So that means it's very accurate. When I do that, my calculator shows 2.4555 seconds which I would have to round to the 4 sig fig that I just mentioned. So 2.456. And again, these answers here could be arranged randomly, so don't necessarily write down the letters. It's not guaranteed that the letters are the same, but of course the answers are the same. Okay, compute the work used to lift an object by multiplying its weight 9.00 newtons with the height 1.00 meters. So three significant figures here. It's not 9.01 or 8.99. No, it's apparently 9.00. So three sig fig. And the same thing here. It's not 99 centimeters or 101 centimeters. It's 1.00 meters. Three sig fig. Multiply these two numbers. Is of course your calculator is going to give you a nine, but the answer is not just nine. The answer is 9.00 because it means it is that accurate. If you actually check this one here, 9, 9 joules, then you would say that you measured less accurate than what you really did. You did measure to 3 sig fig, so it needs to be 3 sig fig, 9.00 joules. Do not suppress those trailing zeros here behind the decimal point if they are indeed significant. All right, one more. Compute the velocity which with, with which water should spout out of the hole near the bottom of a vertical pipe. Multiply the exact number 
2, again, there's an exact number 2, infinitely many sig fig, with g equals 982, and with the height of the water of 53, then take the square root. So I'm going to do that 2 times 982 times 53, enter, I take the square root of that number, and my calculator shows me 322.6329183, and then I'm going to look at here how many sig fig. Well, 53 centimeters is what I measured to the closest centimeter, so I have two sig fig. There's a given 982, so that's three sig fig. And then there's the exact number two, which either has infinitely many sig fig, or I disregard it dis disregard it sig fig because it's an exact number. That reduces it then to the two sig fig right here. So it's not going to be this one, it's not going to be this one, it's going to be 320 centimeters per second. And you will come across significant figures many, many times when you do the labs, take data, calculate, when you do practice tests, proctored exams, homework. They're all over the place. And I even have exercises to show that we are actually using significant figures in our everyday life. It's not just a science thing. All right. Still in the important notes, Word document, writing a conclusion for the lab reports. And these are also listed at the end of each lab manual. So label the statements true or false here for writing the conclusion for lab reports, list your results or examples of re your results, compare re your results to published results or to each other, do an assessment of the results, that means comment on the comparison, look at further outcomes of, of the experiment, if applicable, and do an error analysis that is a usually a qualitative listing of random and systematic errors, what could have caused them and how they influenced the results. There will only be one lab, which is the density lab where you actually have to quantitatively calculate some errors. All right, then you're also supposed to list unspecified human errors in the lab report and no, that's a false, don't do that. You're also supposed to list computation and rounding errors in your lab report and your conclusion of your lab report. No, you don't because you are supposed to avoid any kind of computation and rounding errors. All right, the next one are still in the important notes and I'm just going to give these away here that um, the discussion board if, if you take the lab intensive you get free points for this one here because it's for at home students only but for good measurements you get four points for presents computes results correctly gets full points measurements and results that make sense two points and I think all the rest here are two points, use a correct significant figures, a got good conclusion that also includes a good error analysis. And again, this one here would be a freebie if you're not an at-home student, if you take the lab intensive, so don't pay attention to the photos or discussion board here. Okay, and on the next one, which is actually kind of the last one, the ninth question here, there is a word document listing the physics objectives as well as the expected accuracy for the lab experiment. So for the very first one measuring the expected accuracy should be quite high around 5%. You can read that in that word document and really there isn't really a physics objectives. The objective is just becoming familiar with the metric system and with measuring. On the density well, the objective obviously is to figure out the densities of supplied specimens and notice that it has a very high accuracy. There are no moving parts in that experiments and you're using at times a caliper so the accuracy should be very high 1%. Same thing for the pendulum, very high 1%. Sure, the pendulum is moving, however it's moving very nicely, very smoothly. So a high accuracy and its physics objective is to determine the acceleration due to gravity that you find throughout the entire course. For the force table, Newton's second law of statics and it is quite high, 5%. The reason why it's not 
as good as 1% is because there is some static friction that influences the results as well as trying to read off the spring scales that are used for that experiment. Simple machines, efficiencies of simple machines and it looks like these are in the correct order. The um, accuracy is only 10% on that and you will see why that is, for example, friction and simple mach machines which is hard to measure. Projectile motion, ballistic pendulum, determine the muzzle velocities of the foam dart guns or or crossbows and the accuracy is only 20 percent that's because there's friction and air resistance involved. By the way as I mentioned that here about what causes good accuracy or not as good accuracy that should be actually part of the conclusion when you talk about errors. Centripetal force so Newton's second law of force centripetal force also highly dynamic that's why the accuracy is only 20 percent. Torque and center of mass Newton's second law for rotational equilibrium. Now that one is very very accurate because there are no moving parts and you can measure nicely with a ruler in a digital scale. Stress and strain, elastic behavior of a rubber band, hydrostatic pressure, efflux speed, orifice coefficient, specific heat capacity, heat flows between water and Supply, supplied specimen. Here the accuracy is actually relatively low. So plus minus 20 percent is usually expected and you will see when you do the experiments why that is. Quite a few measurement errors influence the results. Heat engines, efficiencies of heat engines, DC circuits, equivalent resistances in series and parallel, circuits the accuracy is very high because you're using a very good multimeter which is basically the only thing that could produce errors and the capacitance is quite high. The capacitance actually has a little higher error here because there is um, a systematic error usually associated with it. Okay and this one is the extra credit question. I guess this is the guy here and this is what he can help with these here. And that was the lab video for the preliminary lab quiz.